In today's video, we're going to talk about some personal finance stuff. Specifically, based on the spreadsheet I linked down below that is free for you to download that will cover some basic cost of living things and hopefully share with you some insight on pricing projects for your upcoming 2024. Let's do this. So in this video, we're going to be covering some basic personal finance skills, but taking a perspective that we as freelancers need to factor in our general cost of living to be a human being, but also producing work for our clients to get money and make a living being artists. And one of the biggest things that I believe most artists can do to help create a successful freelance business is to have a low humble but nice cost of living. One of the most important things an artist or business owner, does not matter which one, can do to understand their business is their burn rate. So a burn rate is basically the minimum amount of money that you need to make to afford your minimum standard of living. I need to make this much money to make these ends meet. That's it. Your burn rate should be the minimum amount of money that you can take on a day rate or an hourly rate or a project rate before you start losing money. Now, factoring your burn rate is multifaceted. It could be an hourly rate, day rate, project rate, etc. And it's really hard to quantify because everyone's cost of living is different. But what I can say for all freelancers is that we all have an equal amount of time in the year. Whether you live in Manhattan or Mississippi, we all have roughly 187 to 220 days per year to be a freelancer. And I say those numbers because on average as a freelancer, we're not working as much as someone who has a studio job. If you have a studio job, you're typically going to be working 250 to 280 days per year, which gives salary artists and salary jobs weekends and holidays off. But us as freelancers, our work schedule is more volatile. We're not working every single day. So I say 187 to 220 days because that gives us two months off with weekends and holidays. And those two months can be used to help grow our business, marketing, business development, networking, etc. Now, like I said, calculating our burn rate is a little hard to do. But in this spreadsheet, I hope to break that down and make it so much simpler. I'm actually really excited about this because I put on my economics degree hat and ran some math and calculations and spreadsheets to try and give freelancers a good tool to give a rough foundation of what a project price could be, what our day rate could be, and what our hourly rate could be. Now, before we go any further, I do want to make one caveat and say that I am not giving financial advice. Please do not take anything I say in this video as I should make this much money and Jag said this and therefore I should do all of these things. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. This is not intended to be financial advice on how much money you should make because it is very different between every person. So in an effort to not be biased and make any suggestions on finances, I'm using government statistics data from the United States census.gov to help give us a good foundation of how this spreadsheet works. You need to plug in the numbers to fit your lifestyle and what you need to live. I'm using the household per capita income, which is roughly $37,600 as a foundation for this spreadsheet for a burn rate. And then I'm also having a target annual income, as in we as artists might want to target the median household income. Like I said, this is not financial advice. You should figure out how much money you need to make and how much money you want to make based on where you live. The data that is in the spreadsheet that you download for the first time is purely based on the per capita and median income because it's a nice unbiased number that is published by the United States Economics Government thing. So with all the term stuff and legal things out of the way, let me just give you a quick rundown of how this works and then you can download and play with it. Anything that's white, you'll be able to change. So working days per year, that is how many days we wanna work in the year. We're gonna keep it at 200 because that's a nice middle ground. I have the recommended here if you want, but 200 days is a good start. I also have the number of projects per year. How many projects do you think you'll do? And that really just depends on how big is your project. I put in 12 because that turns out to 
one project per month. That sounds nice. I could do 52, one project per week, or instead I could set the number of projects to 50 because let's say we wanna take off two weeks around the end of December. So then we would have 50 projects per year. And when you adjust these numbers right here, it's going to adjust our burn rates and our target rates. So all this stuff is built on equations and calculations to help us give a foundation of what our burn rate is. So when we set this back to 12, when we adjust any of these numbers in white, it's gonna affect these values right here. So we can see our minimum project price, we can see our maximum number of days per project, our minimum target burn rate per day based on how many days we wanna work and our minimum hourly rate. So what this data is really saying is that if I were to work 200 days per year and I was to take 12 projects per year, that would mean that my minimum project rate, the minimum amount of money I could take on a project per month would be about 3,070 dollars. And with this calculation, it also gives us how many working days we can spend per project. Now, our day rate and our minimum burn rate would be this much money, $184. Because if we were to work more than 200 days, let's say 210 days, our day rate would go down. And all these numbers in white are all going to be modular so that you can update it and get a good foundation of what your minimum prices should be. I'm going to undo that and keep it here. Now this last value that we can change is our target annual income, which is how much money do we actually want to make? And if we kept this at the median household income, which is pretty reasonable depending on where you live. And if we look at the bottom values right here, we can see that our target project price should be about six grand, $5,833, and we'd spend 16 days per project our working day rate would be $350 per day, or our working hourly rate would be about $44 per day. That's awesome, that's solid, that's great. And if we were to be a freelancer making this much money without kids, let's say we're single living in Manhattan, this might be a good way to live. Now, if I were to say, set this to $1 million, then that would mean our day rate would be $50,000 per day, and our hourly rate would be $6,250. How likely is that? Very low. So one of the big things about being a freelancer is that when you choose a rate, it also has to be something your client will say yes to. So that's why I'm keeping this at the median household income because there's a reference point right there that's based on statistics. Now, what I hope this information conveys is that our target income and our minimum income means that anything we make in between our target project price and our minimum project price is still profit. We're still making more money than our burn rate, which is a good thing. So let's dive into the rest of the spreadsheet. And I'm just going to quickly go over this because I'm assuming that you know how to use Excel a little bit. But basically, long story short, anything that's white, you can change. You can change the category name from home to the name of your house or your address. It doesn't matter what the category name is. You can change how much price you pay and you need to decide the pay period. So I've set this up as a little drop down menu. So it could either be per day, per week, per month or per year. So on average, monthly cost is a good way to estimate things. And on average, you pay your rent monthly. Let's say hypothetically, you spend $2,000 per month in rent, it would factor into your monthly cost. And then this is how much you pay for this category. Now to use the spreadsheet, you would have to go through every category between transportation, food for yourself, pets and animals, personal care, etc., taxes, all that stuff, and factor that in to how much you pay per month. Now, a quick sidebar and a quick side note, I don't know how much money you should pay in taxes. I got this number because I went to the TurboTax calculator and I just spit in, if I made $35,000 per year, how much taxes would I pay? And it said this much. Unfortunately, living in the US, taxes can be confusing and expensive and I am not giving legal or financial advice on how much money you should pay in taxes and this is not what you should pay in taxes. But I felt it was wise to put a number in there rather than leave this at zero and then have someone be like, I have a huge tax bill and I didn't think about this. Unfortunately, when it comes to being a business owner, you have to think about all the things that you will be spending money on to factor in your burn rate. So let's scroll up and when we plug in any of these values, so let's say hypothetically in the freelance section, we go out to business dinners. We do that 
once per week and let's say we spend two hundred dollars and those business meals uh we're going somewhere nice and we also have a website and we spend fifty dollars a month for our website so set that to per month and now our freelance expenses here would be nine hundred and forty dollars per month and then let's say hypothetically we wanted to max out our roth ira which is a retirement and saving account we would set this to six thousand five hundred dollars per year that is the current maximum allocation and contribution you can set to your roth ira per year so that means our savings and investment category is now this much per month the reason why i built the spreadsheet this way is that when we scroll up our burn rate is now factored into all of these other categories so if we were to let's say our rent was five thousand dollars per month our cost of living is going to go up pretty substantially so like I said, I can't decide how much money you need to make to live, but what's important is that you need to know how much money you need to live so then you can price your projects accordingly. So then you know if a client comes to you with a budget of $5,000, it fits your budget. Versus if they come to you with a budget of $2,000, you'd be like, I'm sorry, I can't make that work with my, with my business. So the big and most important thing to get from this spreadsheet is what are your personal expenses and how that would factor into the minimum amount of money you could take on a project and still make ends meet. Now, what about pricing a project? Because this is going to be where I stir the pot. This spreadsheet right here, the freelance personal finance estimator is not what you should use to determine how much you should charge for your projects because every business is different, every client is different, and every budget is going to be different and making a business profitable requires a lot of extra steps. If you were trying to build a studio, I don't recommend doing this method. But what I'm trying to say is that if you are trying to build a business, the most important thing you need to know is your costs. If your costs are too high, you aren't going to be able to sustain that business and eventually you're going to go out of business. That's just how economics works. So what about rates? Well, when I was visiting the 2023 Camp MoGraph event, I had the opportunity to take a workshop with one of my super duper friends sam snyder and she is a motion graphics producer and in her workshop she was so kind as to share rates for creative directors art directors illustrators 2d animators etc and it ranged somewhere between 300 and a thousand dollars per day depending on the role and it would be unfair for me to say what you should try and charge because not every industry is the same. Not everyone is dealing with Disney dollars or Nike or whatever else. Maybe it's a mom and pop shop florist who needs some basic video content for the holidays. So in this video, we're going to end it here with what I think you should charge. And what you should charge is, and I wrote it down in my handy little notebook here, a competitive industry rate that is relative to your skill set and experience on the job that is also relevant to the industry that you are creating content for. What does that mean? Basically, figure out what your client's budget is and see if it works for them. Because at the end of the day, it does not matter what your day rate is if your client does not say yes. So at the end of the day, if you are a freelance artist, the most important thing is to create good, high quality work, understand what your costs are, and make sure that you're charging a rate that is fair for the amount of work you're doing and skill set that is within your client's budget. And in the next video of this series, we'll be actually talking about budgeting out a project and figuring out our costs. But with that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed this video on basic personal finance skills because learning costs as an artist is very boring. But if you've made it this far, it makes me so happy because I want all of my friends to be able to make a living doing what they love. And unfortunately, a big part of that is learning a little bit about the money things. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. And I would love to open up a discussion if you have any gripes with what I have said today. With that out of the way, I will leave you with the final tip, and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you'll make some gains. Goodbye, my friends.
Bye.